Hey, this is Carl Emilius, and today's video is about the LG UF7600 Smart TV. Now, I originally did this video a couple years ago, so I want you to now use this video as a reference on how to actually use an LG or LG Smart TV, as they call them now. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube station. Thank you very much. Hey, this is Carl from Day Player Computers. And today we have the UF76 Series 43-inch 4K Ultra LED TV. So this is actually not a true 4K TV, because a true 4K TV is 4096 by 2160. This is a UHD TV. A UHD TV is 3840 by 2160. But I call it a near 4K TV. But when you look at the screen, the screen is just perfect. It's unbelievable, the richness, the radiance, and there's nothing like this. This is four times better than any standard 1920 by 1080. That's your regular standard HD TV. Again, this is a 3840 by 2160 TV. All the manufacturers like LG and Samsung, they use the word 4K. Again, it is not a true 4K, it is a UHD TV, but it is awesome and very close to 4K. As 4K, again, it's 4096 by 2160. Some of the other specs that come here, we have True Motion, it's 120 hertz. What that is, if you were gonna watch sports, or a fast movie, it's going to be very smooth and lifelike. Another thing has WebOS. Now WebOS, I'll bring it up quickly like this. This is WebOS. WebOS has all your features. It has your Netflix, your Amazon, your Hulu, and you can web browse. Basically your WebOS is your built-in operating system for this LG 7600 series TV. Um, this model happens to be the 43 inch TV. Um, and another big feature is it's Energy Star certified. What is Energy Star qualified? It's nothing more than this television is going to save you a lot of energy, okay? And it's going to use its power very efficiently. So that's what you want. You don't want a power hungry television because most people have their televisions on for several hours a day. This meets the standards where it's going to cut down on all that power consumption. So that's a huge factor in this. So let's talk about this LG TV and its 4K capability. Okay, when I mean 4K, I mean 3840 by 2160. Now, 3840 by 2160 is equivalent to approximately four 1920 by 1080 television. So if you split it up like this, you have one, two, three, four. That's how powerful the resolution is. And I want to show you a screen um, I actually am using the internet capability of this television. Um, it says right here, 3840 by 2160. This I have in the background. I'm going to bring up. This is a 3840 by 2160 screenshot I have. It's a 4K screenshot. And I put it on this television to show you how nice this TV is. Look how crisp it is. Look at the greens, look at the blues, look at the whites. This is 4K at its best. And this is why I watch all my sports, all my movies now on this smart television because it's nothing like you'd ever seen. So now I'm gonna show you some of the many uses this monitor has. So what I did is I typed up 4K Ultra City Dubai pictures. And what I'm gonna show you is just unbelievable. So I'm gonna view the image. And then I'm gonna expand the image. Look how vibrant that is. That is an UHD 3840 by 2160. Okay, that is perfect. So I often use this monitor as actually a, a video editing monitor. I'm using this, as you can see, on my Mac Pro. So I'm gonna bring up something else. Let me bring up Final Cut Pro. And it's coming, it's restoring. And I just wanted to show you, look at the aspect ratio. It's kind of around one to one. I can see all my effects 
I can see my video screening window, I can see my timeline, I can see all my folders with all the various data that I imported. Look how big it is, look how robust it is. You cannot touch a screen like this for I would say under two grand at this size and this magnitude. And it really has a four by four by four ratio. And in, even if you calibrate this, it's even better for video editing. So let's talk about one of the big, big highlights or things about this LG 7600 series television. I wanna bring up something. I have the Magic Mouse, okay, this is my remote. It's called the Magic Remote, if you see here, I have it here. I'm gonna press the home key and it's gonna come up and it's gonna, it's gonna show you something. This is outstanding. This is called the Web OS. Web OS has a lot of features. As you can see, one of the things it can do is it can act as a web browser. We'll get into that later. But what I really wanted to show you in this Web, two, web OS 2.0 is that it's, it's streaming capabilities. You do not need a computer to operate this television. You don't. It's a smart TV. And by the definition of a smart TV is that it can do a lot more things than can your conventional TV can do. For example, let's go through one of the things that can do. Now, I have Netflix, right? I'm going to click on Netflix. And it's loading. This is outstanding. Again, the only thing I have to do is I have to connect my internet service to this television. And it's done wirelessly. There is no cable connected. So I'm just going to click on my membership. Now, I'm going to look at, I'm going to stream some different things. And let's go to Batman. Okay, I'm going to play it. Look how nice that looks right now. Now I want to speed it up a little bit. And let's start playing here. Look how clear that looks. Look how radiant looks. It almost looks like he's there. I'm there. There's nothing like this. This is 4K at its best because you have all these different pixels working together. You have way more pixels. When you have more pixels, you can put more graphics and more detail into the picture. So we're watching Batman Begins, I believe. And it just looks, it looks awesome. It looks really good. So that's one thing I wanted to show you. So I'm going to get out of that. I'm going to exit this. And I'm going to go back to the WebOS screen, okay? So we just looked at Netflix. And now I want to stroll down to something I think is really cool. So another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the web browser right now. So I'm going to go down to here, it says web browser, I'm going to click on it. And this is, believe it or not, this is the full screen, it's actually I got from the web. So I'm going to exit this full screen, and now I'm going to go, notice it has a browser right here built in again. No computer needed to be connected or anything like that. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to go to www. let's go to Apple. So I click on that and it's going and it should go to, there we have it, Apple. Uh, it has a new iPhone 6S. So it's scrolling. Look how nice this is. Look how detailed this is. This is another feature. So we can stream, excuse me, we can stream movies. We can browse the internet. This is what a smart TV does. And this is why everyone should have one. And this is why I have one. Another thing I wanted to tell you about was this mic it has. So if I press the mic, and again, the mic is on this remote. The mic option is on this thing called the Magic Remote. So if I press the mic like I'm doing right now, I'm going to press the mic. And I say a word, it's going to look up that word. Kevin Hart. 
see, there's Kevin Hart right there. And sure enough, look, it's Kevin Hart. He's on The Real Husbands of Hollywood. Uh, he has his own stand-up comedy, uh, Kevin Hart, I'm a Grown Little Man. And then he has a movie, Kevin Hart, Seriously Funny. So that is amazing. So now I want to go into some of the options of this TV. What I mean by options are the settings this TV has. So when you look at the TV, I have another 4K screensaver. It's just beautiful. It's unbelievable. So I'm going to pick up to get to my options or screen settings. We're going to have to pick up our magic remote again. This is the magic remote. So there's a little circle in the bottom left hand corner of this remote. That's what I use. I click it and then these things come up. These are some of your options. So for example, if you go to the picture and it has sports. Well, if I click it, it has game, photo. These are some of the picture modes you can have. If you're watching a game or you're what you have a picture or you want it vivid, or you want it standard, or you want it APS, or cinema, or sports, or whatever. These are some of the options you have. I put it back to standard. Now sound. If I click on sound, you can have sound for game. Um, you can have a standard sound. You can have a cinema sound, which is more robust. It's probably that uh, Dolby Digital simulated sound. You can have news, you can have sports, you can have music, you can have game. So each one of these options gives you a different sound for whatever you have. For example, if you have sports, if you're doing cinema, if you're doing music, it's all going to sound different according to the spec here. So now the aspect ratio, let's click on that. What, the, what it means by the aspect ratio is that this is the original one. This is 16 by 9. This is like movie mode, okay? If you don't know, it's 16 by 9. So that's the original. So I click on it. You know what? It can go to 4 by 3, which is your standard CRTV. Back in the day, you had a CRT, which is basically a square box. It can go to a, a 4-3 ratio, but it's not doing it right now. But we'll go back to that. A sleep timer. Let's click on that. The sleep timer is off, but if I'm watching a lot of movies and it's late at night, instead of wasting energy and have this TV on, what it will do is it will shut itself off. Like I can set it. If I click on 10 minutes, 20, it's already counting down. See that? It's counting down. From 20 minutes, it's counting 1955, 1954. It can go to 30. It can go an hour, hour and a 30, uh, two hours, three hours four hours and back to off. I turn it back to off because I usually shut off my TV pretty diligently. So parental lock, this is the big thing. If you click on this, it's on, but you can shut it off. What happens is if you don't want your children or any person watching this television, you can put in something here which is called a PIN. You have a four digit PIN code and if you put that PIN code in, and if they don't know the PIN code, they cannot get into this television and watch uh, TV with it, certain channels. So we'll close that. Okay, so now we're going to go into some of the advanced options. So again, if you don't know how to get into your options, this is how you do it. I'm going to close this out. Now, again, this nice 4K wallpaper of the mountains, beautiful beautiful screen. So now I'm going to use my magic remote again. Um, I'm going to go down to this little, it looks like a circular jagged wheel on the bottom left hand corner. I'm going to press that and my, my options come here. But now I'm going to scroll down till I see advanced options here. And then I'm going to press my enter key. And now it's loading. See that it's loading right here? And now this comes up. These are all your advanced options. So now I'm going to scroll and let's start here. Picture. You click on a picture and right now we're in the standard picture mode. Um, it says here, what I like about this television too is it, it explains to what the option, explains, excuse me, it explains to you what the option is. That's what I really like about this smart TV. 
And in uh, picture modes, it's in standard. And it says, choose a picture mode, then customize display settings such as contrast, brightness, sharpness, and that mode. Okay, so if I, if I click this picture mode, right, I clicked it. I'm in standard mode, but then I can go deeper in the mode. So now I can correct things like contrast, brightness, sharpness, color, tint. I can scroll down. I mean, look how good this television is. I can do all these different things. All right. So now I can click on sound. What sound do I have? Okay, my smart sound mode is off. What is smart sound mode? Well, it says it over here. Automatically optimize sound based on content type. So remember I told you before, if it's sports, it's going to play one way. If it's a movie, streaming movie, it's going to play another way. Okay, so that's how smart this TV is. My sound mode right now is in standard. Okay, so it has sound effects, volume mode, sound out, AV sync adjust, sound optimizer, sound test. It has all that stuff. So let's see, if I click in the standard mode, I can go and change it to cinema, news, sports, music, a game. That's pretty good. So let's go to our third option, channels. Now, channels comes up. I currently don't have this TV connected to a cable. So I can't get any cable stations. Now you say, well, Carl, you were just streaming Netflix. Well, that's through my wireless. All right. So this cable, a cable can be connected in the back of this television, which I'll explain to you uh, a little bit later. But channel tuning, let's get back to this. The third option is channels. So with this, I can do channel tuning. What is that? I can scan and save available channels. So if I connect this wire and I click and I, if I connect, excuse me, this cable wire and I press channel tuning, it's going to scan for all the channels that I have on my uh, cable service provider. And I can just play them randomly. Channel manager, it manages all the different channels. You can edit TV channels, set favorites, and manage parental control settings. So basically, you can have shortcuts to your favorite shows instead of scrolling all day. You can keep your kids or company out of certain channels you don't want them to go into, things like that. And you can have your channels, which is probably a database where you can, it says here, to display it, it displays your channel group. So you can put your favorite channels, and if you click my channels, all of them will come up at once. Pretty good. Now, the fourth, let's click on network. This, this is pretty important because this is one of the ways in which you can stream. Remember, in order to use this TV effectively, you have to have a home service provider for internet. A home service provider is a company that gives you internet. Now, it could be Time Warner Cable, it could be Comcast Cable, but you have to have something like that. Or you're missing a lot of capabilities of this television. You can still do things like connect your computer, uh, which I showed you, which is pretty cool because your computer looks stunning on this. Um, you can play from a Blu-ray player, but without cable service, which is huge, you can't stream. And streaming on this is really good and you can't use the internet which is really good okay so let's let's look at the fourth advanced option we're going back to networking so let's see here it says tv name lg web os so that's the tv wire connection ethernet not connected let's connect that let's see here wired now i'm not connected to the internet it has a connection in the back we can do internet but I'm doing it wireless, okay? It's more it's more efficient for me because I don't have to drag any cable wires. So we don't have that, so we're done with that. It's actually in the general settings. That's the fifth advanced setting I want to show you. So I want to show you something in the general. So I click in general. Um, it has what language you want to do, what locate, what day and time. I'm going to scroll down because I want to set up my internet. So this is how you do it, I guess. So if we scroll down, and remember I go to general, I scroll down to the bottom about this TV. Let's click that. So, 
when I'm in there, it says TV information, LG WebOS TV. Okay. I click that. Now, look at this information it gives you. It gives you the model number, it gives you the serial number, the device name, the WebOS TV version, the total power on time, available internal storage, but look at this thing called MAC, M-A-C address wired. Actually, let's go down to the M-A-C address wireless, the M-A-C address wireless. So what this is, is you take these numbers, the 4C, the 09, the D4, the 4B, the DF, and the 8A, what I have to do is I take that big number with the semicolons and I put it in my wireless router. Once I put this in my wireless router, my router can now communicate with my television. And now I can use the smart TV. This is what you need. This is the biggest number here in order for your TV to work to communicate to your wireless internet. So that's a big, big thing. So my Wi-Fi here, I go back to internet, I go to network and it says I'm connected to the, the internet. And, and shows it, look, it shows my network, which is Carver. That's my wife, Amber and me, Carl Carver. So, and it shows all the internet, so the wireless internet that are available. So it's pretty cool. It's very cool. So I'm going back to general settings again. And you have the power saving mode. You have, let's click on that. HDD power saving mode. It's on. That's fine. Um, safety. Let's click down to safety. Now, safety is on. I don't know why it's on. But you can lock your programs, like I said, that you don't want children or other people to watch. Um, you can have channel locks, which are the numbers. It's like, all right, this person can't watch channel 114 or whatever. Application locks. It can lock like Netflix, Hulu, whatever application is on this television, they cannot use it. Input locks. It can even lock the input. For example, there are three HDMI 2.0. They are high speed. Now, the HDMI, uh, excuse me, HDMI 2.0 is big because it runs at 4K, the 3840 by 2160. Okay, that's HDMI 2.0. Now, what is accessibility? Well, accessibility is that some people just maybe don't see as well as the regular person does. And so for this, for example, if I'm in accessibility options, I can enlarge focus image. You, uh, if you turn this option on, images on your home screen and the LG content store will automatically enlarge. So if I click this option, a lot of the images will enlarge. So the people who can't see as good as a regular person can see. And that's very important because, you know, this TV should be made for everyone. And so people who need these special accessibility options should have them. And LG was kind enough to put them on there. Because it should be it's, it should be standard, which it is. Closed caption. Um, if you want advanced captioning options, for example, if you want letters, words displayed in large letters, um, why the movie is playing. Someone could be deaf, for example. All right, so you can have those letters playing on the screen when they're talking. They're having letters on the bottom. Um, audio guidance. Um, turn on or off audio guidance for visually impaired viewers. So basically, if you have a hard time seeing the TV, uh, you turn on the audio guidance option. For example, it'll talk to you. It'll talk to you and tell you, oh, this is how you do this. Press this. Do that. But it'll be talking to you. It'll tell you how to operate this television. That's what I'm talking about. This is why this is a smart television. It goes above and beyond the conventional regular television. I mean, in this last one, audio guidance, I mean, it's helping people who can't see that well to operate this television, which is great. So now I want to look at this television from the outside, the hardware aspects of this smart TV. I want to show you some of the specs it has on it and how significant they can be to your viewing experience. 
I'm going to pick it up gently. Gently, I'm going to move it like this. So this... This is some of the hardware. So we're looking at it right now. And it has a Ethernet jack. That's for your computer. It has an audio. That's a left and right jacks. And it has your component. And it has an optical right here. It has your headphones. And it has a line out, which is pretty good. So if, if I scroll over here though, and you look here, it's got HDMI, that's 4K at 60 hertz, that's huge. So your things, so if you're moving your mouse cursor, your mouse cursor won't go slow because some of the people's first generation are complaining about the mouse being slow. And look at that, it has built in three of them. 4K HDMI 2.0. You don't want the 1.4s. You want the 2.0 HDMI. So we go to the side here, and they're really on the side. So I'm going to put this up, and I'm moving in. And here are the... This is the HDMIs, 2.0s, 1, 2, 3. And here are your USB, 1, 2. And is that a... That is... That's a USB 3.0. So look at this. This television has all the latest capabilities, which is awesome. It's unbelievable. So look how thin the back is and everything. It's unbelievable. Look how nice that is. It's thin. So if I go up top, I'm going up top and I'm scanning on the top. Look at how thin that is. It's unbelievable. To the side, I'm going to get back here like this. Look at that. Just really nice. Very well made. It's an LG. And we're just going to scan and look at it. And look how nice that is. And then we're going to look at the Magic Remote. This remote is pretty cool. This is what I've been telling you all about. This is the mic I was talking about. So when you press this and you say something, it'll go to whatever it is. Like we went to Kevin Hart. It found Kevin Hart when I pressed that. This is the home key where all the Netflix options and Hulu and the web browsing came up. It's right here. And these are your buttons. And this is your enter key. You're going to press that a lot. Which is pretty cool. And it comes on two nice stands. Look at the stand here. And it has another stand over here. So what do you think about this television? Well, I think this television is awesome. Not only does it look excellent in 4K, I mean, look at the earth right now. It looks stunning in 3840 by 2160 resolution. Not only do you have, look at that, WebOS 2.0, where you can stream Netflix flawlessly, or you can go on the internet perfectly, okay? Not only do you have True Motion, which you can watch your sports, and 120 hertz, so they won't have any jagged lines or anything else like that. Not only can I just press a mic like this, Kevin Hart, and it said mic like this, Kevin Hart. It does everything, and it's very, very serious about energy. It's energy conscious. It's not going to be a, a power overload. It's not going to make your bill go up uh, huge. This is a smart TV. And as we've shown in the back, it can play your DVDs. It's got component in the back. It can connect to the Internet. It's got an Ethernet jack in the back. Oh, it can connect wirelessly to the Internet, too. Um, it's smooth around the edges, as we showed you, and it can do much more. So this TV is great. If you don't have a smart television, you might want to check out the LG 76 series. It is awesome. I'm Carl for Dave Larry Computers, signing out.